Hi everyone, it's Don from Don's Family Vacation and today I want to bring you 25 tips to help save money on your next cruise. And it's going to cover an awful lot of topics, so get ready, get ready to jot them down because we're going to talk about them right after this. Number one, the daily newsletter that's delivered to your cabin every day has tons and loads of specials in them. So if you're looking for anything to do whatsoever, check out the news flyer because sometimes you'll see 40% sales on things or two for one specials in the spa and things like that. So don't forget to check out the newsletter for daily deals. Number two is the best day to book a specialty dining reservation is on, is on embarkation day, the day you get on the ship. Quite often they're the least crowded and the cruise ships know this and they offer a lot of different deals. For instance on Carnival, sometimes you can get a bottle of wine added to your meal uh, for free. On other cruise lines sometimes they'll offer two for one specialty dining to fill up those specialty restaurants. So if you're going to book one, that's the night to do it on. Number three, if you're going to have a spa, book it on a port day because it's the time that they're looking the most for people uh, because everyone's off the ship exploring the ports. So that's the best time to get the best prices and the best deals as well. It may be a force of habit for a lot of us when we're at the bar and the bartender hands us our drink for us to tip them a dollar, two dollars, three dollars, whatever we're tipping them. But remember, for every drink you order in the bar, there's already a 15 to 18% gratuity added to your cost and it's right there on the bill. So the first thing you should do on each ship, because it does tend to vary, check the receipt of the first drink you buy and if it says, you know, 18% gratuity on there, why are you leaving more money for the bartender? Because he just made almost, you know, over $3, you know, $2 on pouring a drink and handing it to you. Uh, you know, it what, took them, what, 60 seconds? So <laughs> that's a pretty good hourly salary and tips just from those gratuities. If you're at a port that is close to the ship, for instance, uh, Ketchikan, Alaska, uh, they offer an awful lot of walking tours where you can go around for the shore excursions and, you know, they'll bring you around to all the different buildings. Uh, and it can range anywhere from $59 to $100 per person. But the town is only small. It's a very easy walk. It's very, you know, so why not make your own shore excursion and save that, you know, $50, $100 a person and use it somewhere else on your cruise. Number six, don't use the ship to shore phones or your cell phones when you're on the ocean. They can range anywhere from 75 cents to $3 a minute while you're on the phone. And if you do it two or three times during your cruise, the next thing you know, you got a hundred to $200 bill that you weren't expecting. And gosh forbid that you should forget to turn your phone off of airplane mode if you made a call. And you're gonna be very surprised because you're gonna end up with a five and $600 cell phone bill. Number seven, you decided not to get the soda package. You decided to, you know, just buy them as you go. Well, take heed that even sodas on the ship could have the gratuity of 15 to 18% charge added to it. So check the receipt of a soda you buy. It may be cheaper for you from then on to just go and buy the soda package for the rest of the cruise because they already have the gratuities included in the soda package and it won't cost you extra. So if they're adding, you know, 18% onto every drink you buy, it's not long before it adds up to what that soda package costs. And quite often by two o'clock in the afternoon, you're over what that soda package would have cost. Number eight, every cruise line is different. So find out individually what they allow you to bring as far as drinks on board. Are you allowed to bring your own soda on board within reason? Are you allowed to bring a couple bottles of wine on board? Find out what their restrictions are. And if you do say you're a soda drinker, 
bring your favorite pop with you if they allow you bring a case with you it has to be in your on you know your carry-on luggage it can't be packed away so keep that in mind as well but you know uh, you can get you know two dollars and fifty cents for a 12 pack of pop at a store and on the ship those 12 drinks could cost you you know close to 100 bucks so you're out to dinner and you decided to open uh order a bottle of wine and you and your companions whoever is there you ended up only drinking two glasses out of that bottle of wine well don't just leave it on the table tell your waiter to cork the wine and save it for you later. They will put it aside into their storage freezers and uh, refrigerators and the next time you go dining you can request that bottle back. So why pay for another bottle of wine when you still have half a bottle sitting somewhere that you could reuse. If you're ready to cruise and you can cruise anytime you have the kind of position that you can just leave at the spur of the moment, you're retired or anything like that, Yes, you can get some fantastic deals leaving in the last three to four weeks of a cruising because they're trying to get rid of those last couple of cabins. Chances are, though, those cabins are going to be very limited. You're not going to have choice cabins on the ship. You're going to have some of the ones by the elevators and some of the lower deck cabins. So keep that in mind as well, but you'll definitely probably find some very cheap cabins that way. Number 11, if you can't do that, then book your cruise as early as possible. Quite often, you only need to put down a $100 deposit on the cruise and you don't have to make your next payment for, if you book 18 months out, you don't have to make your next payment for another year. So it's good to reserve that because chances are you're going to get the best price the farther out you reserve. But monitor it, look in on the cruise line every once in a while and if you see the deal, Call them up and they'll make the changes for you and you can keep the same cab and only get it at a better price. Number 12, know what's free and know what costs extra. So find out if that little coffee shop is actually an extra charge coffee shop. Find out if that sandwich shop costs you more. Find out if the flow rider costs you more to use. So you know what's free and what's not. So you're not heading to events that's going to cost you extra money that you didn't know about. Number 13, I kind of brought it up before, but it bears repeating. Put your, air, your cell phone on airplane mode so you don't end up with a ridiculously high cell phone bill from roaming charges. And trust me, they can be huge. My cruising coming up in December is 14 days. If I did not switch it to airplane mode, my bill could be over $1,700. So keep that in mind when you're thinking about your cell phone airplane mode automatically when you head on your trip. Number 14, I don't know what it is, but there's something about a casino on a cruise ship that everyone wants to try. To save money, set yourself a limit, and if you lose that money, say you go in with $200, if you lose that $200, know your limit and say that's enough. And keep in mind that cruise ship casinos don't have any governing body over them. They don't have a Nevada gaming commission like Las Vegas does they can set those winnings at whatever they want. So if the normal thing uh, for winning on a slot machine is one in 20, they can set it at one in 40. So yeah, your odds of winning on a casino on board a ship are way less than say in Las Vegas. Number 15, pack less. I know this might seem like a trivial thing to some people, but for every bag you're handing to the porter, you're tipping them a little extra for that. But not only that, if you're flying in and you're a family of four, if you go with four suitcases, each person gets one suitcase is fine. The minute you each have two suitcases, those extra suitcases cost extra money when you're flying and that's return and here. And it can range up to $50 a bag. So you're just adding two to $400 worth of suitcases that you probably could have left most of that stuff behind. Number 16, don't fall for all those sales pitches on board because cruise lines, most of them don't make a profit from your ticket sales. They need to sell things on the ship like the upgraded dining, the beverage packages and all this kind of stuff, shore excursions. That's where they make their profit from. So one, from the minute you get on board, you're going to be bombarded with people trying to sell you stuff, trying to sell you stuff in the shops, trying to sell you stuff in the spas if you go to the spa. Oh, this is a great treatment and blah, blah, blah. 
why not try these products? We can sell you it for 10% less. Don't fall for it. That'll you know keep your money. Unless you really, really want those things, you could uh, easily spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars on things that you weren't counting on spending on just from the sales pitches. Avoid the photographers on board. There's always going to be photographers out there who will offer to take your picture and oh, just go to the Photoshop and take a look. Yeah, well those photos can range anywhere from 10 to $20 per photo. So if you had three you like, it could cost you $60 and you're walking around with camera anyway. Ask somebody to take a picture of you. It's free. It's not a ton of money, but every cent counts on a cruise. Number 18, if you're looking to buy souvenirs, don't buy them on the ship and don't buy them close to the port, like on the dock area if they have a whole bunch of tents and everything set up. Try and go as far away from the port's area as you can. Uh, you can quite often find your same souvenirs for half the cost just by staying away from the little tourist area that's right around the ship. Number 19, sometimes you'll get an onboard credit, say of $100 for your stateroom. Well, if you don't use that $100 credit, you lose it at the end of the ship. They don't give you the money back. So an easy way to use that is to say you're going to go to specialty dining and use your onboard credit for it. Or just take, if you haven't paid your gratuities yet, just go to the customer service desk and say that $100 onboard credit, put it towards my gratuities. That way you know for sure it's all used up and you're not wasting any of that onboard credit. Number 20, you haven't taken and booked your beverage package yet and you're on board and you're thinking about getting the ultimate beverage package so you can drink as much as you want on the ship. Well, you know what? Don't buy it on the first day because when you buy it on whatever day you buy it on, you have to pay for the whole trip. So if you buy it on day one, you're paying $89, which is the cover charge on one of the cruise ships that I just looked at per person. So you get $180 and you're on the ship at six o'clock. So now you have to drink $180 worth of liquor between 6 p.m. and the time you go to bed. So is it really worth it? Or chances are you're only gonna have two or three drinks. Well, that's much cheaper to pay for it by yourself and then buy the beverage package for the next day. So you can easily save you know, $100 just by doing that. Tip number 21, if you're at a port where the ship is right there and you can go off and on very easily, well, if you're walking around the port, why not head back to the ship for your lunch and eat in one of the dining rooms and then go back to the port again afterwards? Why pay for your meal of a family of four on the port for you know, 100, 120, 150 dollars when you could just go back to the ship in 10 minutes and, and have uh, the meal that's included with the cost. So a great way, especially if you have two or three of these port destinations, you can easily end up saving four to five hundred dollars for a family of four. Tip number 22, some of the seminars that they hold often give away things for free. Like at the art auction, sometimes they'll give away a piece of art for free. Quite often they'll have wine and hors d'oeuvres there, so you don't have to buy those, they're complimentary. The same thing goes with spas. Sometimes they'll you know, have a spa demonstration and they'll give away some of the products while they're there. Or they'll give away a free uh, spa day to somebody. So keep that in mind. If you've got really nothing to do and you're just looking for something, try taking in some of those seminars and getting a hold of some of those free goodies. 23. I always like to tell people this, if they can, book your travel insurance through a third party, not through the cruise line, because the cruise line's prices are quite expensive and often you can get your travel insurance at half the cost, you know, quite easily. But if you're a nervous person and you don't like doing things on your own, you want to have the safety and security of everything all at once, then yeah, go ahead and book your insurance through the, uh, tra not the travel agent, through the cruise line, because uh, at the very least, I want you to have travel insurance. So you've been on a few cruises now and you get the complimentary mini bar set up for the first night. If it refills, you have to pay for it, but your first one, whatever's in there is complimentary. Did you know that you could decide what you want in there? So say you only like vodka. 
Well, you can tell them to take the rum and everything else out of there and fill it only with vodka. And it doesn't cost you anything extra. The same goes for the soda. The same goes for water. Whatever is in that mini fridge, you can ask them to switch out for your favorite beverage at no cost to you. So you're on the ship and you're running out of cash. You always like to carry some cash with you when you go on uh, into some of the ports. Well, if you go and take $100 out of the ATM that's on the machine on the uh, cruise ship, that could cost you $20 in service charges for that, you know, $100. A cheaper way to do it is to go to the casino, buy $100 worth of chips, go back, you know, turn around and sell those chips back. Quite often, you'll get only a a $3 charge on that $100. So you're saving $17 every time you do this. And if you do that $2, you know, there's $36 that you just saved. It might be a little bit of a hassle, but quite often you're going to the casino at some point anyway. So why not just do it there? Buy a little extra chips when you're there so you know that you can sell them when you're leaving and get that money you're looking for for your next shore excursion. So there you go, 25 tips on how to save money on your next cruise. And all of this can be done quite easily without seeming like you're nickeling, diming yourself on the cruise. You can still enjoy everything on the cruise. So it's really not that hard to save more money than you think just by avoiding some of the traps that are out there. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more tip videos and more cruise videos, Please hit that subscribe button. Until next time, have yourself a great and a safe vacation.